Hey guys, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to do a search on Zillow.com for specifically what you're looking for. So in today's example, I'm going to be looking for a two-bedroom, two-bathroom house in Las Vegas, Nevada, between the prices of 100 to 200,000. So what you're going to want to do first is just go to Zillow.com, which I'm currently at their homepage right now. Uh, you can also log in to your user account if you've already made one. Um, and then once you log into your user account, if you want, you can save houses that you like to look at at future dates. So that can be kind of convenient instead of uh, always having to research the same houses over and over again. So what we're going to do here is you can type in an address, a neighborhood, a zip code, a city. Uh, like I said, we're going to be looking for a two bedroom, two bathroom house in Las Vegas uh, between one hundred and two hundred thousand dollars. So we're going to type in Las Vegas. Uh, and then it'll pop down here in the uh, drop down area. The NV is going to be for Nevada. So we'll click on that. And it's going to take us right to this page here. And you can see this blue outline. That's going to be the Las Vegas city limits. If you're interested in looking at houses that are beyond that particular border, all you got to do is left click on the outside of that border. And then it'll just show you all the houses that are currently on the screen that you're looking at. So. What we're going to do here is go into the filter options. Uh, we don't want potential listings. We just want uh, houses that are currently for sale. So we're going to uncheck the potential listings, which are the ones little circles that are blue. Um, and then we don't want, uh, let's see here, what we have 8,779 by agent, 73 by owner. Um, so you have all these different options in terms of uh, you know the types of for sale properties that there are you can get rid of some of these if you don't want like if you don't want to see any foreclosures if you don't want new construction uh, things such as that um, then you can check those different boxes all right so we're gonna keep all of them for now and you can see I just clicked on the outside of the uh, city border so then that blue border went away and now it's just showing me all the houses that are available in the entire screen that I'm looking at. So now we're going to go to the price here. And like I said, we're going to be looking between 100,000 and 200,000. But this is just going to be whatever price range that you're looking for for a particular house that you want to buy. Maybe you go a little bit lower than what you think your bottom dollar is, and you go a little bit higher than what you think your top dollar is. Uh, especially on the higher end, you can potentially negotiate your way down to more of your purchasing price if it is a little bit higher than. Um, what you're comfortable in going up to but for this video we're just going to type in that 100 to 200,000 range and then we're going to move over to the other options here the first one's going to be bedrooms so we're looking for a two bed two bath so we're going to go two plus on the beds and then for the bathrooms we are also going to hit that two plus then you have other options here you can type in square footage the size of the lot maybe you don't want a house built before a certain uh, time period. So let's just do uh, for fun here. Um, we'll limit the year built back to 1990. So a little bit newer of a uh, building potentially. And then you also have other options here. We're not interested in just lots and land in this work because we're looking for a two bedroom, two bath. So we're going to get rid of that. Also, I'm not a big fan of manufactured homes. So we're going to get rid of that. Um, and then we'll keep the rest in there for now. You can also limit by days on Zillow. Typically on Zillow, if a house has been on there for more than three months, you're probably gonna have either a house that's overpriced or uh, potentially there's something wrong with the house. Also, it could just be a market that isn't really good for sellers. So that could be another situation where the house could be on uh, Zillow for a really long time. But if you want more of the newly listed houses, uh, like, you know, ones listed within the past month or so, you can always put in that limit. We'll just look for newer listings. So we're going to do just houses listed in the last seven days for this search. And you can also type in keywords like if there's a specific thing that's going to be a deal breaker for you, like you have to have a pool or you need a garage or something like that, you can type in those keywords and it's going to uh, continue to filter those out for you as well. So once you're done with typing in the different filter options, then you're going to go ahead down here and click apply. And then you can see we're all the way down to 131. When we started before all the filters, we were at about 9,000 or so. 
So certainly cutting down on the uh, number of options we've had. So uh, this little screen here is going to be where you're, you see all these red dots. Those are all the uh, different properties that are going to be in your filter results. You can zoom in by either clicking this little plus button here. You can zoom out by clicking this minus, or you can also use the scroller on your mouse. I'm using the scroller right now, and you can see I'm going when I push the scroller up, it's going to zoom in. When I pull the scroller back towards me, it's going to zoom out. So just some different zooming options there. Uh, you can also change how the map views. You can change it over to the aerial view. And right now it's on the street view, but we'll go to aerial view so we can kind of see the landscape of the area and what's in the uh, vicinity of some of these houses. I kind of like looking at aerial personally. I think it gives a little more detail of what the neighborhood looks like of the houses that you're going to be looking at. And you can also um, show different school options by clicking on this little uh, scholarly hat here. Um, that's another option you have. But that kind of clutters up the map for now. So, But if you have kids or something and you're interested in what schools are going to be in the vicinity of the home that you're purchasing, certainly something to keep in mind to have that as an option. So we're going to scroll in here um, and just kind of look at some of these houses here that have fallen into our uh, particular filter filtered out view so uh, let's see what we got here I like looking at ones that have pictures so you can see it looks like some of these might not have pictures because there's uh, it only shows you the price and then the uh, total number of beds bathrooms and square feet but then you go down to this one you can see there's a little picture there next to all that other information once you find a house and it's in a location that you're interested in and it you know has the right amount of beds baths and price range for you you can click on it and once you click on it you're gonna get this little pop-up screen here and once you have this pop-up screen it's gonna take you to this page first and foremost that's gonna have all these different pictures here and you can click the over button to look at all of the pictures of the particular uh, house that you clicked on or apartment or condo that you clicked on and if you want more information, you just scroll down and you can see the address, the information. And usually there's a write-up about the house. The more detailed the write-up, the better, uh, you know, whatever agent or homeowner that's selling their house. If they're really serious about it, they're going to put a very accurate description in this area. And then you can also continue to scroll down and it shows you a bunch of different facts. The year, you know, the house is built, how many parking spaces it has, you know, the type of heating and cooling it has, the lot size, the type of house, this is a townhouse. Um, and then you scroll down even further and you just, just get tons of information. Uh, the better the listing, typically the more serious the seller is going to be. If it's not a very well put together listing, um, you know, that seller either isn't extremely motivated or they're just not doing a good job of listing their property. It might not be the greatest person to work with potentially. All right, so continue to scroll down here. You know, you get the utilities, uh, type of financing, uh, your home owner's association fee. I'm always really annoyed when I'm looking at condos or apartments or townhouses or things such as that or houses that are part of a community and they don't list the uh, homeowner's association fee. It's really annoying because homeowner's association fees can vary wildly. It can, I've seen them as low as 25 bucks a month and you can get in the five six seven hundred it just kind of depends on um, how luxurious potentially the place you're living and how many uh, amenities and things such as that that it has you can also see when the property was last sold for which is um, a pretty important thing to know this one sold uh, not that long ago about a year and a half or so ago for about 170,000 and it's currently listed at almost 200,000 unless they made significant upgrades uh, I would definitely negotiate that down it's always great to see um, the history of the property in terms of what it's sold for in the past because you can use that as leverage in your negotiations um, and then you know you continue to scroll down here you can see that price and tax history so you can again see here it last sold for 169.9 uh, it, it sold in 2014 for one 33 so you can see that the housing market is continuing to go up 
Um, but you can certainly use these numbers if you're trying to negotiate a better price. And then you can also see the property taxes and the tax assessment. Another important thing to learn uh, if you're going to be purchasing a house, you ha not just have to calculate your monthly house payment, you also have to consider how much your property taxes are going to be every year. And another expense that some people overlook is going to be your homeowner's insurance that you're going to have to pay every year. Uh, both of those uh, two things, property taxes and homeowner's insurance, are going to add to your monthly uh, payment that you're going to be making on that house. And then, you know, you just have some more information down here, nearby schools, what neighborhood it's in, uh, you know, different mortgages, homeowner's expense, and things such as that. And then also potentially uh, some agents that you can contact for more information about whatever house you're looking at. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. Um, also, if the house that you're looking at is one that you want to save and you're logged into your, your account, you can just go ahead and click that save button and it'll save it into your uh, account so you can go to your account page and find that later. You can also click that again and it'll unsave it. And to just get back to the original screen that had all the different properties on it, you can just click this close button right here. And it's going to take you right back to the screen that you came from. So that's going to wrap up this video, guys. I hope it was helpful in some way for those that might be new to Zillow or just not quite sure on how to use all the different features. Um, I'm going to make a few of these uh, Zillow videos kind of describing some of the different things that you can do on here. I hope this helped in some way. For more uh, tech content in the future, you can click that subscribe button. And we hope to see you in future videos. Bye.